So this all happened way back in the late 1990s, when I was a college sophomore. Me and the girl I was dating at the time had been going steady for about eight months. And since she was my real first girlfriend, my mom was pretty keen to meet her. And what better time than the holidays to introduce her to the folks? During the week before Christmas, my mom's family traditionally held quite a large gathering up at my uncle's place over in Sandy, Oregon, my home state. Pretty much all of my extended family headed out there year after year from all over the Portland area. And since they'd gotten word that I was bringing my girlfriend, the hype to meet her was huge. I won't lie, I was kind of nervous that they'd embarrass me in front of her. But that anxiety was totally misplaced. She got on really well with all of them. And despite some playful humiliation when a cousin of mine told her the story of how I literally peed my pants at the Haunted Mansion ride back when I was a kid, they were a credit to me. When it came to driving her back home, she seemed to be more into me than ever. We'd agreed to drive back down to Eugene at like 7 p.m., so I wouldn't be too tired driving back. But since we had such a good time, we stayed way later than we had ever planned to and didn't get on the road until like 10.30 that evening. In the hopes of making the journey a little faster, I ended up taking the Oregon 211 instead of just sticking to the I-5 South for the whole drive. Annoyingly, this did not actually make the journey any faster, but point being, the 211 was pretty much surrounded by farms or these huge swaths of dense pine forest as you can imagine, big stretches of it aren't lit very well at all. And for some parts of the drive, we were moving through complete darkness, saved only by our car's headlights. But honestly, I wasn't all that worried about it. I was pretty good at reading a map. And once I was back on the I-5, a road I know pretty well, I figured everything would be all good. So we're just cruising along in high spirits, talking about how goofy some of my family were. But generally, my girlfriend was singing their praises, telling how she could not wait to meet them again. It's right around then that we hit a section of highway that descends down this big old hill, leading up to the bridge crossing over Deep Creek. There, the highway is sandwiched by some very dense forest, the densest you're likely to ever see and there is absolutely nothing lighting up the highway. So the only thing we could see from the front seats of the car is like maybe 20 to 30 feet that our headlights are illuminating and pretty much nothing else. But like I said, we're in high spirits, completely unprepared for what was about to happen. Right as the highway starts to level off, something darts across the front of us so fast and so suddenly that I barely missed smashing into it. I braked so hard that I almost gave the pair of us a whiplash. Then, when we're both stopped, both me and my girlfriend are in a complete frenzy of, oh my, did, did you see that? What was that? There are plenty of deer in that area of Oregon, plenty of coyotes too. But the thing that ran out in front of us was way too big to be a coyote and something about the way it moved gave me this gut feeling that it was not a deer either. The shape was just too slender, almost like whatever was out there had moved on two legs, not four. Now, next thing, and I know how completely dumb this sounds in retrospect, but my curiosity just got the better of me. I decided that I wanted to investigate. So, again, this was all so incredibly dumb. I turned the car like 90 degrees on the highway so I could point our headlights into the woods. Yes, this could have caused a horrible accident if another car had come along at the same time I was doing this. But was I thinking straight at the time? Of course not. You see, as a kid growing up in the Pacific Northwest, I'd heard a lot of stories about Bigfoot and Sasquatch, I'd be lying if I said they didn't capture my imagination. 
Now, I'm not saying that I thought I'd caught a glimpse of a Gigantopithecus or anything. I know the stories are mostly exact that. Just stories. But part of me just wanted to be sure. So, like I said, I turned my car 90 degrees, turned on my high beams, and stepped out of the driver's side onto the highway. I stare up into the trees for a minute or two, but I don't see anything. Nothing is moving. The whole scene was as quiet as the grave. But as I'm looking, I just get this feeling in the pit of my stomach and start to feel as if I'd made a huge error of judgment. It was one of the most intensely terrifying feelings that I've ever felt in my life. A feeling like I was being watched by something predatory. I know it's a huge cliché, and the whole I felt like I was being watched thing is such a tired old trope, but I really don't know any other way to phrase it. My heart was pounding, the hairs on the back of my neck are now standing on end, and my guts turned to ice. Without turning my back on the woods, where I expected the danger to come from, I started edging back towards the car. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, I practically jump out of my skin when I hear the car's horn let off one long, excruciatingly loud extended blasp. I mean, it scared me so bad that I almost straight up peed my pants. Haunted mansion style. Like when I was a kid. My first thought was that my girlfriend has ended up leaning on the horn as she climbed over into the driver's seat for some reason maybe to get my attention. She'd done that once or twice before. But as I turned back around, she's still on the passenger side, but that she's actually leaning over to push on the horn in what was evidently a frenzied attempt to get my attention. I run back to the car and ask her if she's okay. She doesn't say a single word to me. She points off to a spot about 50 feet away from where we were parked in I spin my head around to see what she's pointing at. That's when I see it. What was, without a shadow of a doubt, the thing that run in front of our car just a few minutes prior, lit up by the residual light of our high beams, what I saw was really, obviously a man, but he was covered in animal fur, what looked like a mishmash of deer skins, bear skins, and elk skins, and on his head, secured in a way I'm not even sure of were these antlers. At the time, because of how close it was to the holidays, I remember the words reindeer man just kind of flashing through my head, maybe in the naive hope that the dude was dressed that way out of some misdirected festive spirit, but he certainly didn't seem in any kind of festive spirit, not in the least bit. Like, I couldn't see his eyes because the weird kind of head covering he had on. But I could see his mouth. And at first, he kind of looked like he was giving us a smile. Only as I looked, I could see it wasn't a smile at all. This guy was just baring his teeth at us. Like the way chimps do, as some kind of warning. After that, he turned and walked off into the forest. Obviously... Right after that, me and my girlfriend just got out of there, got back on the road towards the I-5. It took us both a while to calm our nerves, but my girlfriend was particularly shaken up. That's because she'd seen something that I had not. And as we drove on, she explained exactly what that was. While I'd been staring off into the woods, looking for Sasquatch or whatever, she noticed him out of her peripheral vision but was basically frozen in fear for a moment or two as she watched him slowly walk towards me. Or rather, walking isn't the right word. From how she described it, this guy was stalking, the way a hunter might stalk a deer. The way she put it, she had to summon pretty much all of her courage to be able to lean over and honk the horn the way she did. Then, when Reindeer Man had heard the honking, he backed off a little, and before I saw him, 
like I said, he just kind of froze in place before disappearing. I did a fair amount of online research when I got home to try and find out if anybody else had any run-ins with this guy, but there was absolutely nothing online about him. There are plenty of crazy survivalist types up here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm guessing he was one of those. But they tend to be pretty open about their existence. Sometimes even advertise themselves as militiamen or whatever. Whereas the reindeer man seemed like he was living completely off the grid. I don't live in Oregon anymore. Me and my girlfriend during the encounter broke up at the end of college. But when we were still together, I happened to be driving down towards Eugene. I always avoided the stretch of highway that I saw the reindeer man on. I've told this story a lot over the years, and some people honestly just think I'm making it up, like a campfire tale or something. But it's not a tale. It's not made up. And it's definitely not just intended to be some dumb, spoopy story. It's most definitely a warning to anybody traveling on that road at night. Because if my girlfriend wasn't with me when he ran out in front of the car, if she wasn't there to spot him before he crept up on me, only to scare him off with the blast of the horn, I honestly might not be here to warn you. So please, this holiday season, drive careful, drive slow, and do not stop for any reason on dark, deserted stretches of forest highway. Back when I was 16, 17, and even up to 18, my father and I were very close. In fact, we would often, instead of getting hotels or anything like that, we would just camp out on the side of the road. Literally, my dad would pull over and we would just walk maybe 200 yards into the woods, pitch a tent, and there we go. We'd done this more times than I could possibly count, so this wasn't scary for any of us. We were pretty well versed in the outdoors, camping in many areas that were uncomfortable to many people, just kind of out there, many times along the highway because of the long road trips we used to make. We often didn't have time to find a hotel or want to, my dad and I were much more adventurous and found the thrill of hiking and sleeping in the woods much more exciting. However, we did have one bad experience. We were in Northern California, somewhere north of Sacramento to be exact, but not quite to the Oregon border yet. We had pulled over somewhere along the road and we decided to camp out, probably about a hundred feet or so from the road. I remember that very distinctly, because this time we had camped much closer to the truck. I think it was because my dad wanted to make sure he could get his supplies easier for whatever reason this time, and the highway was much more audible. So everything was normal. We fell asleep that night, and as we were getting up the next morning dismantling the tent, my father, who had walked off a bit in the woods to go explore and go relieve himself in the morning, was running back to me saying we gotta double time it and load the truck up. Somebody is coming after us. I just listened to my dad because he's never fearful in the woods. So we loaded up the truck. I kept trying to look back but did not see anything. We loaded up in probably about 10 minutes, which is record time for both of us. We got out of there and back on the road. My dad seemed very unnerved, very panicked, very unlike him in nature. He's always extremely relaxed, very knowledgeable, very secure in this environment. For him to act like this, something was clearly off. I began poking and prodding for answers, and after a few minutes, he opened up. He said he saw about an eight to nine foot tall man, what he described as covered in animal skins, or maybe it was like an upright walking deer. He wasn't too sure but it looked like a man with large antlers or a headpiece. I remember being so confused, but he said this man's face was all wrong, distorted, and glowing white eyes. What was weird with his description is he said that this eight to nine foot tall man was so covered in these animal skins 
it was hard to tell if he was really that hairy or just so well disguised in animal skins and said it looks like he had a crude axe in his right hand that he was dragging against the ground. When I try to ask more about the purpose of this man being out there, that maybe somehow we had encroached on his territory, my father dismissed that and said judging by the look in his eyes and his face, he looked partially human, but something else. I never knew what my father meant. Now that I'm much older, and that experience is so far in the past, I almost wonder if he's speaking about a Wendigo, since I know so much about them now. Unfortunately, my father passed away only two years after I turned 18. It was right before my 21st birthday party, actually, and so I'll always wonder what he truly saw in the woods that day. Could it have been a Wendigo? Could it have been a Sasquatch? Or something else entirely 